What is an OT or Operational Technology Cybersecurity Analyst? So in this video, we're going to talk about the OT Cybersecurity Analyst role, and you'll learn some different job titles that are more common for this role throughout this video as well. Basically, we're talking about critical infrastructure here. So you're going to learn an overview of the job, different job titles, responsibilities, salary, tools, and do you need college degrees or certifications or any of that stuff for this particular role? So basically, how do you get that first job in this role? I want to stress that typically this type of role is not going to be entry level. You want to have some kind of an IT background just so you understand how a corporate IT network works and then you'll be able to see the difference between an OT network. Now, or I, excuse me, ICS network. Now, that being said, you can, there are some people I've seen get what I would consider entry level roles in this type of area but it takes a lot of technical skill. So if you don't have really good technical skills and you're not really driven, then it's probably not the best role for you to start out in. So that being said, OT just stands for operational technology. So um, when we think about that, think about manufacturing, you know, so like making baby food, for example, or making food for your dog or cat, the energy industry, so keeping the power on for you to flick the light switch or, or have the refrigerator going, Transportation industry, so uh, think semi-trucks moving or big ships going into ports, that's all critical infrastructure. Healthcare, so grandma's pacemaker, all this stuff is considered critical infrastructure. So the OT or operational technology helps keep all that stuff running. And, and unfortunately, these days, a lot of that stuff is being connected to the internet, right, for remote access for engineers. And that opens up a whole world of security risk for the organizations because these systems were not built for that. They were not built for the the threats of today. They were built for being isolated, and now we're connecting them to everything. So one key key thing to, to keep in mind for this type of role is that when we think about the CIA triad, which is confidentiality, integrity, and availability, and for those that don't know, I'll just run through that real quick. Confidentiality is making sure that the right people or systems or applications can access the right stuff and, and nobody that's not authorized can, can access that. Integrity, just making sure the information is not altered in any capacity. A good example of that would be if you have blood pressure problems and your doctor is prescribing your medication based on your blood pressure readings. If someone goes in and changes the numbers in your chart, the doctor could prescribe the wrong medication dosage for you and it might cause harm to you. And then availability just meaning that the right people, systems, or applications can access that information when they need to, that they have access to. When we talk about critical infrastructure, we focus on availability first because some of these systems are critical to actual human life. Like if something goes down, it could kill somebody. And we obviously don't want that. So availability is a key thing here. And when we think about risk assessments, especially around penetration testing, that's where this area differs so much from traditional IT. And that's why it's so critical for you to actually have experience and know what the heck you're doing, because you could literally kill somebody or kill thousands or even maybe millions of people, depending on how bad you mess up. So not to scare you away from this role, but definitely a lot of responsibility with this type of role. That being said, let's talk about some job titles. You might see it listed as OT security engineer. The most popular one is going to be ICS security engineer. And then you may see some plays on that in job descriptions of like security engineer dash or slash or in parentheses ICS. And then also like OT security architect and operational technology or OT cybersecurity engineer, um, security consultant, etc. Typically, if you search for like ICS and OT and SCADA, those are enough keywords to pull up these types of roles for you if you're looking on different job boards out there. So what about actual job responsibilities? So hopefully I didn't scare you away, but basically you're gonna be focused heavily on security controls and what controls can be put in place. So for example, you can't always just patch something in this world because if you try to take some system offline or there might not even be a patch available, it could cause a lot of issues. Could again, cause human error, which may cause human, human uh, cost of human life. So that's why we try to layer different controls in this area, especially like network segmentation. Um, that can go a long ways to help and protect against uh, attacks being successful. You'll be involved in network and host monitoring, but again, you have to be careful with that. Same with like when you're doing a penetration test, you can't just start fuzzing everything and, and, or, and with network and host monitoring, you can't just run an Nmap scan and hope for the best. You can actually knock things offline and cause a lot of issues. You'll be involved in working with PLCs and other embedded things around Windows and Linux. 
Um, you'll be performing risk assessments, like I said. It may be penetration testing. A lot, oftentimes it is. But again, there's very specifics out there. So a, a gentleman named Clint Bodungan and Aaron Shabib and some others wrote a good book on that. And so I'll link that book below in the in the description of this video. You can check it out on Amazon. It's a good book. If you're looking to get in the space, I actually recommend you read that first and then decide if you actually even want to go forward with trying to get a job in this area. And then one of your key things is going to be communicating with stakeholders. Um, that also involves the engineers, which oftentimes engineers are notorious for not wanting to care about security like you do. So you have to learn how to communicate with them effectively to speak their language to actually get them to do the things that you want them to do. So what about salary? Well, low range is kind of the low six figures usually for this. Um, starting out, if you're totally brand new, but maybe with some IT, you might you might get around 85, 90 as a low number, but usually it's right around six figures starting out and then all the way up to 150,000 plus. I know some people that make a couple hundred thousand doing consulting um, in this area. So it really just kind of depends a lot on, on your experience and skill set. In the UK, around 40, 48 to 65,000. And in India, around 900, 950,000 to a million uh, Indian rupees. So what about common tools you might use? Well, um, different network monitoring tools, um, again, like Nmap, Wireshark and stuff, but you have to be careful and, and do your scans a specific way. Vulnerability scanners, uh, you'll be using a lot of threat intel to determine like are we actually uh, being attacked or potentially you know being attacked by a threat actor different forensic tools because there's there may be some malware attacks hitting the uh, IT network as part of this so you'll you'll typically have to do that um, it's pretty pretty rare from what I've seen at least publicly for the malware to jump into the actual ICS networks but it is possible so just keep that in mind as well as part of your investigation and then all that wrapped up into you will be involved in the incident response process what about search degrees, all they could stuff? So you don't need college degrees. You typically don't need certs for this. You just need like to actually be able to do it and understand everything. That being said, the uh, the GICSP, um, and, and SANS has a couple of them here that I'll, I'll mention, but the GIC, GICSP is a good uh, kind of foundational one. It's a global industrial, that's the uh, cybersecurity professional certification from SANS. Um, You've got the response and industrial defense or that grid one. You've also got the infrastructure protection certification for a critical infrastructure. That's that's that third one now, the GCIP. And then there's more of an entry level one that is much more economical. It's around, at the time of this filming, it's around $800 US pricing. And it's it's essentially an ICS cybersecurity certification. It comes with the training, all, you know, all that stuff, plus the exam and all that in, in that flat fee. Um, I have no affiliation with them, by the way. I'm just, it's just a good one recommended by experienced people in this area as kind of an entry level one. But it kind of walks you through the fundamentals of critical infrastructure and ICS and obviously had an ICS network, SCADA, OT, et cetera. Um, so I'll leave a link below in the description. You can check out that cert as well. That might be a good one if you're trying to, trying to get your start and maybe you don't have a lot of experience or something like that. That might be a good one to explore if it's in your budget. But again, you don't need your certs or degrees for this role. You just need to be able to do a lot of good hands-on technical stuff. So that's why it's not really an entry-level type of job. So if you like this video, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, just so you can get notified whenever we publish new videos. And look forward to seeing you in the next video.